gentlelady's time has expired. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from Texas, Mr. Weber, for five minutes. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Administrator, good to see you again. I'm constantly amazed by how much you know about even aircraft and stuff like that. Where do you store all that stuff up here, huh? Well, Congressman, it used to be I'm kind of like a bathtub. Uh, you uh, fill the bathtub up, you drain it out, and there's a residue on the side. <laughs> you fill it up again, drain it out, and there's a little more residue. So over the number of years, I kind of get an accumulation in here. I have the sinking feeling you've discussed this before. So let me go to my questions. Uh, many of the employees at Johnson Space Center live in my district. They're in Dr. Babbins, the, the actual facilities in Dr. Babbins' district. We're still trying to uh, route Clear Creek around it so it gets to be in my district. So we've discussed the deorbiting of the ISS at the end of the decade, uh, but not so much what that does to the people that are, that are employed backing that up. So what does NASA plan to do with that workforce that actually currently supports ISS mission after 2030, is there a plan? Well, we want to keep them, but a lot of that depends on what you appropriate. Uh, as a matter of fact, the fact that uh, this two years, 24 and 25, that NASA has been cut between the two years, $4.7 billion from our initial request, that's going to have an effect on some of the contracts uh, at all NASA centers. And I'm hoping that when you get to 26, that uh, the Congress may see the wisdom of some of these programs. But let me just assure you, you got a lot of folks at Johnson. You got a lot of really good folks on good programs. Uh, you'll never have to face the situation that I had to face as a senator for the Kennedy Space Center when we shut down the space shuttle. They had 15,000 employees and they went immediately down to 7,000 employees. That's not happening anywhere in NASA now. It's much more manageable, but a lot of it depends on the wisdom of the Congress in the future. Well, I remember the shuttle program going away and I know that that was heavy on people's hearts. <clears throat> and I'm assuming that they're probably thinking right about now or we fight facing a similar demise coming forth. Are y'all communicating this to the employee group? Absolutely. And what we are also doing, since you posited the question about the deorbiting of the International Space Station, uh, we want to do that only when we have commercial space stations in low Earth orbit in order to do the research and the training and so forth that we need to do in low Earth orbit for our astronauts as they go further out into the cosmos. We think that by 2031 that the business case will have easily been made for low Earth orbit commercial space stations. And we have put seed money, significant seed money, into three commercial operations that are now developing commercial stations. Well, we appreciate NASA taking the lead on that, so thank you for that. Uh, China's, I'm not sure I'd say, Qinggong Space Station is in orbit, and the CCP would love to whittle down on American dominance in space wherever they can. Now, your previous comments about commercial are very, very encouraging. <clears throat> With the coming deorbit of the ISS, what is NASA's plan to remain maintain American competitiveness with China when it comes to presence in low Earth order. You said a little bit about it, but extrapolate, expand on that some. We want to be, we don't want China to be in the lead. You remember the, you remember Captain Kirk, the final frontier. Extrapolate, expand on what you mean by that. And personally. by the way, uh, that li not letting them be in the lead means beyond low Earth orbit also. It? It I means, agree. It means also moon, Mars and beyond. I agree. Uh, so, uh, for example, we never want to give up this uh, incredible uh, scientific research in LEO. Uh, we are on the cusp of major breakthroughs coming up on pharmaceuticals for disease. Let me give you an example of, of two. Number one, Keytruda and a very effective drug on certain types of cancer. 
but the cancer patient has to take it intravenously, frequently, long periods of time. They have, with that drug, found out how through protein crystal growth on the space station to make that drug into a shot instead of intravenous so that the patient can go in, get a quick shot at the doctor. Uh, that's one example. Stem cell research being used on a whole plethora of diseases. What happens when you grow stem cells in zero G, you can grow a lot more of them. Uh, on Earth, when you grow them, they all clump to the bottom and a lot of them die. In space, they're suspended and they don't die as much. You then freeze them and bring them back. And that is just in its infancy in research, but there's a lot of promise there. Well, thank you for that. I'm over my time, but I, it's fascinating. We appreciate all the help. Gentlemen's time has expired.